So what I'm gonna do on this video is I'm going to show you the different flickering options that we have on this LG C1 recorded at higher shutter speeds using my camera. So what the shutter speed of the camera is, is basically something that blocks the light that enters the sensor at different rates, at different intervals, different frequencies. It's like black from insertion on the camera. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to show you is that even without black from insertion, this LG C1 OLED and all the OLEDs, as far as I know, they flicker. <laughs> so they, a little bit, they flicker a little bit. So I'm going to increase. Right now the shutter speed is 1 over 1000. I am going to increase it. Right now it's 1 over 2000, 3000. Let's take a look at the, at the clouds. So it is very bright and we can already see some faint lines. 1 over 4000, we can see it. 1 over 8000, we can clearly see that there is a black line. <laughs> and basically, if we look at a oscilloscope graph of this LG C1 uh, OLED, we will see that there is a drop. There's always a drop. So it is flickering a little bit, but that is imperceptible. I've seen some people claiming that they can see the TV flickering even without black from insertion. And I would say, no, you don't. <laughs> you cannot see this flickering. It's impossible to see. I am recording it at 1 over 8,000 shutter speed. So let's take a look at the different options that we have. So the most interesting option here is going to be this auto setting. I've been trying to figure out exactly what this auto setting does and it is almost impossible to figure it out because it is changing automatically. And that's what I'm going to show you on this video. And I already know that this auto setting works very well when we use motion interpolation. So when we use D jutter and D blur on 10 and we watch content, you know, 30 FPS for D, D jutter, 50 or 60 FPS for D blur, and we use OLED Motion Pro Auto, it works very well, okay? But medium works better, but it is difficult to tell the difference between these two. So I know that this auto is useful for that, but we are going to see here what this auto actually does. So let me turn it on because this, this one is gonna be the most uh, interesting one. So you see right now there is uh, flickering, but we will see that this flickering is going to change depending of on what's going on on the screen. So if I move the screen, the flickering becomes bigger. You see, it changes. So let me show you as a comparison. Let me show you a different option. Let's see medium, for example. There is no change. So if I move the camera, it doesn't matter. The flickering is the same. But if I change to auto, you will see how it changes. So if I don't move the cameras, if there, there's something moving on the camera. So these guys are moving here. Let me, okay. So if there's no movement on the camera, the flickering goes down. So it flickers less, okay? You see that it, all, it almost goes away. But if I move the camera, then it becomes bigger and it starts to flicker more. And it depends on the content. It depends on the content. So this is a good idea because basically, if there's nothing moving on the screen, we don't need motion clarity. So, you know, just give me more brightness. So this is a good idea, but I believe that this should be more aggressive. It should be more aggressive because in my testing, this OLED Motion Pro Auto is just a little bit better than low. Okay, so medium is much, much better. Right now I am using 100 Hertz, 100 FPS on the game. Let me show you. You see, it's 100 FPS on the game. So I am using that, so it is a little bit slower, so we can capture this uh, better than 120. So you see how it changes with auto. 
this is so interesting <laughs> you cannot see that with the naked eye you see how it changes let me, let me show you high so we see high see what it's doing of course there's a minor variation but you see that it doesn't matter if I move the camera it's the same it's the same flickering so I'm gonna change it to low see that it is brighter medium high again I move no changes medium I move no changes auto I move any changes see it changes if I move <laughs> that is very interesting of course it would be ideal to have you see and it changes a lot it changes a lot it would be ideal to have a super high speed camera like this a slow-mo guys um, that would be awesome so I can record <laughs> you know the pixels moving left to right top to bottom but that, that would be insane I don't know how much those cameras cost <laughs> maybe I can rent one of those cameras one day or somebody I know I know has it and can just borrow it to do a video but we can see here this uh, variation with OLED Motion Pro Auto and I know that this setting works very well with motion interpolation so basically if we use D Jutter 10 or D Blur 10 with OLED Motion Pro Auto it works very well it, it works better with medium though but it is all, almost imperceptible the difference is very very difficult to tell so high doesn't work so when we use D Jutter 10 or D Blur 10 so D Jutter is for 24 or 30 FPS and D, D Blur is for 50 or 60 FPS so when we use those settings so you either use one or the other you can have both on 10 at the same time it's not gonna make any difference just one of them is going to work they do not work together okay some people think that there's a combination that is better no either D Blur or D Jutter is going to work so when we use those settings in combination with this OLED Motion Pro the best setting is medium that's the best setting but auto also works and it works very well for some reason that's the best use case a scenario that I've seen for OLED Motion Pro Auto other than that it is worse than medium at 100 Hertz and 120 Hertz it is worse than medium it is a little bit better than low we see low here it's just a little bit better than low but it is worse than medium and at 60 Hertz it just doesn't work well at 60 Hertz the only option that works is high the rest of them they don't work it just doesn't improve they do not improve the motion clarity it is like out of sync basically so yeah just to summarize the settings the, all the motion clarity settings so we have at 60 Hertz uh, we have all motion pro high that's the best option at 100 Hertz or 120 Hertz and of course you need to have the FPS of, of the game the frame rate needs to be locked okay you need to have a locked frame rate so at 100 or 120 Hertz the best option is high again <laughs> and for uh, motion interpolation you can use medium or auto those are the two best options they are better than high high just doesn't work with motion interpolation it's like out of sync it doesn't work low doesn't work either so that's it when to use low you can use it at 100 or 120 Hertz it improves the motion clarity very very yeah just a little bit so it is not worth it so yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions I'm going to change the shutter speed again so right now it's 1 over 4,000 
1 over 3,000, 1 over 2,000, 1 over 1,500, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 750, 500, that's clipping, 350 is clipping <laughs> a lot, 250, 180, 120, that's clipping a lot, so I would need to use, I can use an MD filter here. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.